half in the bag. I'd buy that for a dollar. Hello, hello, I've been on hold for 10 minutes. Listen, I'm looking for something to prop up a large elderly man for a trip to his lawyer's office. Oh, a wheelchair. That's actually a pretty good idea. He is elderly. You see, I was gonna go with a complicated system of ropes and pulleys and kind of make it look like he was walking, but a wheelchair makes perfect sense. Now listen, do you have anything to mask a very terrible odor? Kind of like the odor of a, of a body decomposing. Like I'm looking for some kind of a, like a cream or a salve, you know, that uh, I could have Jay rub all over his naked body. Ask him about the smell. I just asked him about the smell. I'm talking to the guy now. It Would smells like a dead body back there. Yeah, I know it smells like a dead body. That's because there is a dead body back there, genius. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, about the salve. Oh, oh uh, Walmart, I'll call you back. Hello, officer dead body in the back. I mean, yeah. officer police officer man. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely not a dead body in the back. I don't know why that slipped out. Can we help you with yeah. something unrelated to dead bodies? Yeah, nothing. We can't help you with a dead body if that's what you're here for. Yeah, because there's definitely not a dead body. You need here. a VCR fix? We can do that. That has nothing to do with dead bodies. You need to watch a police training tape or something? I don't, I'm not saying you need training. I'm just saying maybe you do. He I, looks like he might need training. He might. I don't, maybe he's not. Yeah. yeah. Oh, can we help you? Yeah, the sulfur factory across the street's been complaining about a smell coming from your repair shop. What kind of smell could possibly come from our repair shop? They say it smells like a dead body. That's horseshit, sir, to be honest. To be frank with you, that's horseshit. Frankly, I'm starting to question your intelligence, officer. What we do here is we fix VCRs and we occasionally talk about movies. Oh, movies. I love movies. Oh, really? What's your favorite movie? My being a cop, my favorite movie is Howard the Duck. Well, that is, that is a very good movie, but since you're a cop, I assume you've seen the original RoboCop. I don't know what that has to do with being a cop, but of course I've seen it. Do you want to sit down and talk about RoboCop with us? That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> nah. It's much funner to talk about RoboCop than it is to talk about dead bodies in the back of our VCR repair shop. I can't ah. believe we distracted this dumb asshole. So I don't think RoboCop, the original, really needs much of an introduction. Uh, we've all seen it many times, right? Yes. I'm assuming you have, officer, I've never met in my life before, but I'm guessing you've probably I, seen I've it. I've seen it several okay. times. So, so here's a question. Is RoboCop a perfect movie? Nearly perfect. It's a perfect satire. It's, sat it's perfect in its tone mm -hmm. and execution. It's, it's very funny, um, but it's also a really great action movie. As, as an action movie, I can find one flaw in it. Not enough people get thrown through glass? Not enough people get thrown through glass. <laughs> Robocop is just too good when he fights normal human criminals at the end of the movie. Yeah. I, I, even though they got those awesome guns, I, I never really feel in danger of RoboCop losing that battle because mm. he's, he's fucking RoboCop yeah. and they're just human beings. Okay. But that's minor, very minor. Not, that's, I wouldn't even call it a complaint. <laughs> it's just a, a ding on the perfection. Okay. As far as, uh, it, you can talk about like, like movies, like classic movies, like Citizen Kane. Like it feels weird to, to like Talk about RoboCop as some sort of masterpiece. It's it's perfect in the sense that everything it sets out to do, yeah, yeah. it accomplishes flawlessly. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously not a perfect drama. It's not trying to be a drama, though. There's there's drama in it too, though. Yeah, and and, and it works in the context of a RoboCop movie. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like yeah, you have to look at it like. If you're gonna make a movie about a robotic police officer, you could not do it better than Paul Verhoeven does with this movie. It is the world's worst romantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, you have suffered an emotional shock. I will notify a rape crisis center. Yeah, it's definitely not a classic film in the in the, the usual sense of the word. Um, but yeah, like Rich said, or Sir, <laughs> officer. My name is Rich Kozlowski. Rich, Rich, okay. Like Rich Kozlowski, <laughs> Officer Kozlowski said, it's it's perfect in, in everything that it sets out to do. Bitches leave. <clears throat> I mean, you could take the material and uh, 
uh, have a completely different story that's that's about a man like which is what I fear the new one's going to be about about a man who's you know torn and trying to discover himself they throw those elements in here but for the most part this movie's very tongue in cheek it's very satirical and it knows exactly what it is that you shouldn't take the concept of a robotic police officer in the future too seriously yeah. but it takes it seriously enough and it doesn't get into the it doesn't doesn't get into the wife and kids subplot all that much. It's just no. It touches on it, and that's sort of what what triggers his uh, attempt to regain yeah. his humanity. And that's yeah. It's like the perfect balancing of every possible element. Like, well, the, like the wife and kids aren't even the point. The point is simply generically his humanity. Yeah, yeah. It's a corporation yeah. that it's turns a, a person into a machine. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah. that's another thing. Like you could you could mock Robocop. Like in, if you want to look at it realistically, like he's slow. He wouldn't be able to catch criminals. That's inefficient. But it, it, it sells the idea of a man that's now a machine, you know, the way he moves. Yeah. yeah. It needs to be slow and robotic. <laughs> yeah. And they give him a bigger gun than everybody to compensate. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Shit. But it's, it's more important to sell the fact that he's a machine rather than to have him jump around and do action things. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's more about him learning to, you know, like we were saying, his humanity coming back. Yeah. That's what the movie is about, more so than awesome robot action. Robocop is the result of, of slimy corporate weasels. <laughs> <laughs> the corporation owns the I, police I force. could give a crap about protecting and serving the public, but he does, and he's like a contradiction almost. Yeah. That, that's what makes it interesting. It's like, it's not like we, we all got together and created the perfect cop machine, and everyone's like, it, it's just so so sleazy. We, we need this so, um, product. Yeah, yeah, it's so sleazy and so like um, cynical. Yeah, well, and, the, the, and there's the, a little a little ray of uh, hope from RoboCop as he actually kind of cares. <laughs> and, you know, and he's a, he's a hero you could you could root for. You know, it's it's a perfect satire in American culture. It's a perfect action movie. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect cop movie. It's got a nice little drama of finding yourself in there. I, I love it. And then the it's also a perfect comedy too. This movie uh, uh, very accurately predicted the future. We got That's DVDs, uh, we've got uh, little portable GPS systems. Detroit is on the verge of collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Delta City just seems like a good idea to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that element of the first one too, where it's like this looming thing. They're talking about, we're gonna start construction on it in two months. It's just like a little detail and it's not like yeah. the whole movie doesn't revolve yeah. around it. And that's, that's like the, not, I'm not as big of a sci-fi guy as you two, but that's the kind of thing I like in movies. Just the little like background details that make the world feel so real. Mm -hmm. That terrible sitcom that everybody thinks is funny. Yeah, everyone in the future has a very bad sense of humor, apparently. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Will that be in the remake? I buy that you for you a know, dollar. You know what? They're gonna sneak in the line. Okay. But it's not gonna have anything to do with that that fake sitcom. Mm -hmm. It is my great pleasure to present to you Robocop. Also on a on a storytelling level, it's like the the perfect execution. It's the perfect I love how simple and straightforward it is. It's not full of convoluted shit. Um, and it's like 90 minutes, right? Isn't this movie only yeah, 90 it's an minutes? Yeah, hour and 35 minutes. Get in, get out, yeah. Well, it hits all... Oh, it it's hit, 103 minutes. It, it feels shorter than that. Hmm. Hmm. It hits all the right marks. Yeah. Uh, all in the perfect order. But it also indulges in, 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 its, in its world a little. How does this movie work without the like the the commercials and the news reporters? I think it would still work. Yeah, it would lose a little bit of that. Like, because everybody in this movie is just so cold, and detached. It would lose a little Every, bit of that. Everything but... in this movie is exaggerated. Yeah. Sure, it's only a glitch, a temporary setback. You call this a glitch? But uh, you look at like the 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 uh, conference room scene where the guy gets blasted into a million pieces. Yeah. Like that still conveys the same sort of tone as the commercials yeah. would. So, but I mean, they, they they took '80s America and they just like kicked it up like another couple of gears. <laughs> the commercials too, and the news reports, the serve as uh, 
a f creative and fun way to do exposition too. Yeah. Without setting up like in the future here, everything's gone to shit. You know this. This is they they present the news reports just like you would see a news report, but all these horrific things happen. A space laser <laughs> misfires and kills and it's, two it's former standard. presidents. They do, it, they do it while they're smiling. Yeah. yeah, and then they just brush past it and go to another story. And then yeah. they go to a commercial about kids at a board game. That... <laughs> it's, it's similar to Starship Troopers, and, and they explain the whole, like, uh, just the... Backstory, the, the backstory of bugs, and then, you know, do you got to do your part, the propaganda stuff, and, yeah. and without without over explaining it. And without those those things in there, it would just be the straight up story because all these characters are in their world. So you would need someone to explain to you how the future is. And it's great, they have the, the news to it and it works perfectly. Mm -hmm. But I guess like the Ed 209 thing, like falling down the stairs and that kind of, that kind of humor <laughs> is separate from the humor in the, in the news reports. Yeah, and, that's, and that's not satirical, that's more situational humor. Yeah. Where it's like they, they, they spent all this time to build this giant robot thing and didn't think about stairs. <laughs> but there's a lot of little moments like that in there. And then there's really violent, horrific moments too. Like how, come they, how can they work together so flawlessly? Because everything is, is heightened just enough, I think. Like, but you look at like a contrast between that boardroom scene where the guy's getting blasted to bits and then the scene where Murphy's getting killed and like, mm -hmm. that's not funny. Right. <laughs> like it's just executed in a way where it's really horrific and it goes on so long that you really feel for the guy. And then the transition from that to, you know, the screen's black and then the choop, and it opens up and it's RoboCop's vision. It's like the perfect way to execute that type of I, story. I never really thought about it. They do do the exact same thing and they get two entirely different emotions out of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it completely works because well, I think a lot of it is Peter Weller too. Like, if you want to know how important he is to making RoboCop convincing, look at the third movie mm. where they replaced him with some other asshole. Hey, Matt, where you going? Unfinished business. I still haven't seen the third movie. Uh, you've seen it. Imagine RoboCop without the, the horrific violence and, and satirical tone. Is it not R? No, it was PG-13. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of stupid asshole would make a PG-13 RoboCop? We just rewatched RoboCop, uh, even though I think we've all seen it numerous times. But I've seen the to... second one more than I've seen the first one. Really? Yeah. You may be I, the only one. I'm a big fan of the second one. I, I, I consider I, it almost as good as the first one. I, I turned you on to that, didn't I? Didn't yeah, you say I think... it was terrible? And I'm like, oh, no, give it a chance. No, no, no. I didn't what, say how, this guy you've it. never met before? Yeah, I know. To, well, that's weird. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you had a, you had arrested me for uh, public drunkenness. Public uh, nudity oh, and yeah. drunkenness. Public nudity and drunkenness, maybe about 10 years ago. And okay. while I was in the in the tank, you you gave me a copy of RoboCop 2. Mm, okay. Well, let's, okay, well, let's, it, it's, it's hard to, you can only gush so much about how amazing RoboCop is, but a lot of people don't like RoboCop 2 very much. I, I like it a lot. It is flawed. I'm not saying it's perfect, but there's a lot of just great, fun ideas in RoboCop 2. That's, yeah, that's what keeps it going because it's not like the first RoboCop, like perfect streamlined, straightforward yeah. story. And the second one- It's uh, muddled, it's a lot of good ideas, and but nothing ever really gels into a cohesive story. Yeah, RoboCop disappears from the movie for like half an hour. Well, it's like RoboCop's arc is like solved halfway through the movie. <laughs> and then for the rest of the movie, they don't know what the fuck to do with RoboCop. Yeah, yeah, lots of good scenes though. The baby's going with me! No. I'll kill it, man! I'll do it! I'll fucking kill it! We can't have that. <laughs> like, like, you know, in the Robocop 2, that's when they, they put off like the 108 directives in his head and he's all <laughs> fucked up because of, because of committee corporate thinking. Yeah, yeah. His art, I mean, really, the, him electrocuting himself to a racist memory, that should have happened right before the battle at the end mm -hmm. with Robocop 2. But in RoboCop 2, I like the fact that uh, there is literally a RoboCop 2. Yeah. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a nice satirical thing to do. The, the name a, of the... A the, meta the, thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's actually about RoboCop 2. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not just the sequel. It's, it's, a, it's a, a double entendre in mm -hmm. the title. Um, yeah, that sequence is great when they show all the failed examples. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you RoboCop. Stop, 
So that scene, I think, is better than any scene in the original RoboCop. Yeah. Uh, the movie better, itself isn't, isn't... Better than the, the ED-209 scene? I think so. And then they show the one guy, the doctor gets shot, and then they just cut to him, and he's got a cast, and he goes, <laughs> like that. Like he's there the next day, still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of humor, and the same kind of, the style is the same, even though it's not Paul Verhoeven, it's uh, Irving like, Kirshner. Yeah. The 12-year-old kid that becomes, tries to become like a crime lord? Yeah, he's just got this that's foul great. mouth, and yeah, yeah the, the, uh, the little, the the little, little league, league team? Yeah, mm -hmm. the little league team oh, robbing yeah. the store, the electronics store. Well, isn't, that, isn't that a Frank Miller? It was written by Frank, Frank Miller. Miller he's, he's batshit crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that just a work for hire for him? Like, Frank Miller, come he, here and write the script. He was, he was trying to get into Hollywood at the time. Yeah. The funny thing is, I've, I've, I've heard that, you know, they rewrote his script. I've heard his actual original script is a lot more crazy. Well, they, it, I makes, know they, it makes less sense. Yeah, I know they adapted his version into a comic book. Yeah. I haven't read it. But I haven't, I'd be, I'd be I haven't read it either, but yeah. it's, it's infamous. Well, considering the, the track record of sequels, yeah. uh, especially from the 80s, Oh yeah. Uh, RoboCop 2 is is a, a, a diamond in the rough. Mm -hmm. It works on, a, it, it does have some issues. Yeah. Well, um, totally, it has my yeah, favorite they're... line in all of movie history. This could look bad for OCB jumps. Scramble the best spin team we have. <laughs> and you're, and you're, you just, the whole, this thing just shot up everybody. <laughs> and it's just, you just massacred tons yeah, of people. Yeah. Get your best spin people out of this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they just dismiss it right away. <laughs> Almost as good as the first, maybe even better. Oh my God! It, it goes, it goes into the into the ultra schlock territory, which I which I approve of. The first one is more uh, on the ground, you know. First yeah. one's a well-oiled machine. First one's a well-oiled machine. Second one's a well-oiled machine that's kind of out of control. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is RoboCop 2. RoboCop 2, yeah. <laughs> and then RoboCop 3 is not even worth discussing. Uh, oh, RoboCop 3. I, I, I still haven't seen it. Now, is it worth watching just for curiosity? I, I have tried watching it many times, and I've, I don't think I've ever sat through the whole movie in one oh, sitting because it's so sad. fucking boring. It's what the original RoboCop could have turned into in the hands of a different filmmaker. It's when Nancy Allen insisted on being killed off. She gets yeah. killed off early on, and it doesn't have any effect on anything. No, no. And then RoboCop gets a jetpack. They have... um. Ninja robots. Yeah. I, I don't remember. We can't remember what Nobody the hell remembers happened. RoboCop 3. Something happened in <laughs> RoboCop 3. All I know is he flew around in a jetpack against a green screen. What the name? I'm fearful of the new RoboCop. You know what? It'll be forgotten about in a few months. You know what they should remake is Total Recall. Oh, oh they did. They that. did. It was forgotten about in three months. Mm -hmm. They didn't remake Total Recall. They did. Yes, they did. They did. It was forgotten about in three months. Mm -hmm. They took out a lot of the satirical comedy elements and they toned down the violence. It was forgotten about in three months. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing with, with remakes. We can say, like, we can complain about this element or that element and say, like, you know, it's not like the original. But that's, like, with a remake, you make it too close to the original and people say, why bother? It's just like the original. You veer too far in a different direction, people say, I don't like it because it's too different than the original. But what what would be like aside from just not remaking Robocop, which would be the smartest thing to do, what would that middle ground be? Would it be just a completely different story about a robotic policeman that has that same sort of satirical tone? Like wouldn't that be the most satisfying way to make a pointless remake? My vote for that would be a completely different Robocop. I mean, can you name an example of a a remake that just went in a completely different direction from the original? In, in what sense? Story-wise or like... Every sense. Tone? Tone. Well, I, I, I mentioned on a recent Half in the Bag, the Maniac remake. Okay. That to me is like the perfect way to do a remake. Or, or like the fly, the 80s fly, you know. Guy turns into a fly. That's the only connection. Yeah. Or the I, thing. It, the thing or body snatchers or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think the key is that you have to have someone making it that wants to remake it, where it's not like committee thinking. Whenever people say, Oh, there are some good remakes. They always go to those same couple. Mm -hmm. And the thing they all have in common is that they're made by people that wanted to make them. Mm -hmm. And not by a soulless committee and not that just wants by... to profit off of a brand name. Exactly. Has there ever been a successful 
well, not, not, I won't say successful, but a good remake out of a, a pre-established property that was actually good to begin with. Like The Fly, I mean, it was kind of just a schlock, generic, cheap B yeah, movie. Yeah, that was a cheap B movie. Have they ever made something that was already really successful and remade it well? Like an original that was successful? Yeah, original that was successful, very popular, and then it gets remade, and then the remake is also good. You could, you could probably argue Dawn of the Dead. Oh, there you go. Like, yeah. that was a super... Are you talking about successful as far as a film goes or as far as box well, office as far as the film goes, box office, you can package any shit. That's true. Um, yeah, the Dawn of the Dead remake, maybe. Okay. And that's coming from me, who loves the original still, Dawn of the still, Dead. I still haven't seen the remake. It's, you know, it's a completely different thing. It's, a, it's more of an action movie than anything. Yeah, that's a good idea of taking original concept and making it completely different. Yeah. Um, except for the basic framework, which is people are in a mall and there's zombies. Like, right. that's the only... Somewhat similar connection. Maybe the Friday the Thirteenth remake, because oh, it's basically yeah. just another Friday the Thirteenth movie. <laughs> They're all crap. Yeah. It's Jason killing dumb, annoying kids in the woods. You just you just jettison space, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> that never that never happened. Yeah, yeah. I don't like to be this cynical, like thinking about these remakes, but they make it so hard not to be. I know. I know. Instead of seeing RoboCop, go see Robot and Frank. <laughs> the touching story about Frank Langella and a little robot that helps him steal shit? Isn't it's that what it so is? so great. Yeah, and I guess if you want to see a more recent movie that has the tone of RoboCop, watch Dread. Yeah. The guy who made Dread should have made the RoboCop remake if there has to be one. There doesn't. There doesn't? There really doesn't no. have to be a RoboCop remake. I, I understand that, but it's inevitable. <laughs> Just as uh, Gremlins is inevitable. Um... What are the other big ones that haven't been remade yet? We're due for a Police Academy remake. Do you find those movies offensive? I, I find them very accurate. Mm. Wait, was your time in Police in the Police Academy just as wacky? Well, there were more whores. What? And does the real Police Academy uh, contain as many boner jokes? Uh, it contains more boners. I don't know about jokes, though. Okay. So boners and whores. Yes. Is that all that's happening at. at Sometimes the... just boners. Oh. At the police academy that you trained at? Yes. And what police academy was that? I trained at Police Academy 7. Oh, okay. When are they going to remake T.J. Hooker? Next week. It's coming out in the movie theaters. <laughs> it's starring Black Jack. They're going to remake T.J. Hooker, but for sensitivity purposes, it's going to be called T.J. Sex Worker. Mm. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> I write jokes for Jay Leno. <laughs> I time. can tell! That's a, see, that's a joke. <laughs> Well, it's been uh, fun talking RoboCop with you boys, but yeah, I really should get back to investigating that suspicious dead body smell. Uh, uh, hey, officer, uh, I know that the last thing you want to hear is that they took a perfectly awesome action movie and dumbed it down into PG-13 cash grab, especially something like RoboCop. Well, would you like to spend $60 and go see it with us anyway? Yeah, sure, why not? I'll give Hollywood my money so they can keep churning out more crap that I'll hate. Uh, let's go. All right, yeah.